Hello, welcome to Tala Talks NICU. Today we are going to be talking about the neonatal genital exam. Remember, it is so important after a baby is born to have a very good examination of the newborn's genital exam. Sometimes the differences or the variations can be really subtle and really easy to miss and it can have huge consequences. Let's start with the female genital exam. So as you probably already know, when female girls are first born, they very often have a swollen clitoris and swollen labia. This can take some time for it to go down. So just get used to seeing that. If the clitoris is really, really big and it looks more like a penis, then we're more worried about ambiguous genitalia. So be sure to document that and alert somebody. Girls will often have a thick white mucousy discharge from their vaginal canal. And this is because they've been exposed to high levels of the maternal hormone. So it's completely normal to see this. As this elevated level of hormones gradually goes away in the first few days of life, then these babies may end up with a pseudo menstruation, or they'll actually have some bleeding from their vaginal canal, normally at kind of day four or day five of life. Again, this can be completely normal, and it's just because the hormones that the baby was previously exposed to are now gone. Also, have a good look for some tags on the hymen, so hymenal tags, or some sort of vaginal prolapse. These are really common in babies, and actually parents ask about this a lot. Generally, you'll just kind of see the skin poking out a little bit through the vaginal canal. This will generally resolve by itself. Always make sure that you feel around the labia really well. Make sure that you're patting it down and you're not feeling any lumps in there. Sometimes there could be some sort of inguinal hernia that's come down. Other times it really could be an XY infant and not an XX infant, and you're actually feeling testes behind the labia. So make sure that you always feel that area really well. It's often quite difficult to see the urethral opening or the urethra where babies pee out on the in a female infant, but generally if you have the vaginal canal right there, then generally the urethra is right above the opening of the vaginal canal. So again, take a look at that, make sure that it's not extremely dilated or there aren't any abnormalities there. In male infants, make sure that you are examining the penis. I don't normally measure the penis length unless it's really short, so kind of just get used to the length of a normal term newborn's penis it should be above two centimeters, really above 2.5 centimeters. If it's significantly less than this, then you are worried about a micro penis. Look for the meatus or where the end of the urethra is, where babies pee out of, right in the middle of the head of the penis. So it should be right there. If it's a little bit on the lower side, then you are worried about a hypospadias. Sometimes it's really difficult to see exactly where that meatus is just because the foreskin could be covering the head of the penis. While we're talking about foreskin, sometimes it doesn't fully cover the head of the penis. Sometimes it's kind of already looks like the baby is partially circumcised. A lot of times that isn't going to be an issue at all. There can be so many other anomalies of the penis, but probably one of the most common is something called cordy, where the penis is kind of curved like this. This is often associated with a hypospadias, where the urethral opening is kind of under the penis rather than at the head the way that it should be. Then make sure that you're examining the scrotum very well and try to feel both testes within the scrotum. Sometimes the testes can be undescended. Most commonly when they are undescended, they're somewhere along the inguinal tract. So if you don't feel them directly in the scrotum, then kind of go up a little bit in the inguinal area and very often you'll feel a lump there. Sometimes they're completely undescended and they're still in the, uh, in the abdomen somewhere. So many babies are born with hydrocele's, which means that their scrotums are kind of have excess fluid in them and it just all looks really boggy. You can tell that it's a hydrocele and it's just fluid by transilluminating the area and it will kind of all shine bright red. This is not a problem at all. And nearly all the time that fluid slowly resorbs and the excess fluid goes away. But just like with the girls, you may end up feeling an inguinal hernia within the scrotum as well. So this is where you kind of like normally have parts of the intestine that have descended all the way into the scrotal sac. When you feel the scrotum and there is an inguinal hernia, you'll feel kind of crackling within the scrotum. That's air within the intestines that you're feeling. And just to reiterate, with both girls and boys, both of them should urinate at least once within the first 24 hours of life. And to also reiterate, 
make sure that there is an anal opening and all babies should pass a stool or meconium within the first 24 hours of life. Okay, that's it. Remember to like this video and now go watch the next one on spines and limbs and other bony abnormalities. Thank you for being here.